So you've probably been working with a lot of quadratic equations and solving quadratic equations through the quadratic formula and completing the square and factoring and all different types of techniques. But now we're getting into some real life problems where you're projecting or throwing an object into the air and you wanna find out different things about that object like when it hits the ground or when it reaches a certain height or even how to write an equation that models that height as a function of time. And that's what we're gonna do in this uh, particular video, we're gonna go through a three part question and we're gonna be working with this formula right here. H of t equals one half g t squared plus v naught t plus s. And the way this works is uh, g is the acceleration due to gravity and t represents the time. And let's see, v sub zero is the initial velocity or the velocity at time zero, like when it leaves your hand, when you throw the object into the air. And then s represents the initial height or the starting height. So let's see if we can do this problem together. See if you can do it on your own as well, and we can go over it together. It says a ball is thrown in the air with an initial height of six feet and a vertical velocity of 20 feet per second. And the first part of this question says, write an equation that models the height of the ball after t seconds. Okay, so using this formula over here, what we have is we have the height as a function of time equals one half. Now g is the acceleration due to gravity. And if we're working with feet, this is gonna be a negative 32 feet per second squared. If you're working with uh, meters, it would be negative 9.8 uh, meters per second squared. And so then we have t squared plus v sub zero, which is the initial velocity at time zero, which is 20 feet per second. So that's gonna be 20 times t plus the initial height, it was six feet above the ground when we let go of the ball, so that's gonna be plus six. Now we can simplify this down a little bit further to one half times negative 32 is negative 16 t squared plus 20 times t plus six, and that's gonna be the formula that we're gonna work with in this problem. So let's go to the next couple parts. Okay, now part B says, after how many seconds is the ball 10 feet above the ground? Let's just draw a little picture of this so we can kind of get a sense of what's happening here. So we have our equation here, and we know that at time zero, so let's say this x-axis is like our time, the y-axis is like our height, but we're not throwing it from the ground, we're actually throwing it from six feet above the ground. Notice the A value is negative, that means the parabola is opening downward like this, and so the parabola is gonna look something like that, okay? And we wanna find out when it's reaching that height of 10 feet, okay? above the ground. See, this was six feet where we left, when we threw the ball, okay, above the ground, we left, left our hand, right? So we wanna find out, it could be at this point, it could also be on the way back down at this point. So let's see if we can find out what those two times are. And there, I'm gonna show you a couple different techniques for um, solving this problem. The height we know is gonna be 10 now, so let's write that equation down. 10 equals negative 16t squared uh, plus 20t plus six. Let's go ahead and subtract the 10. We're gonna get everything on one side of the equation and set it equal to zero. So negative 16 t squared plus 20 t. When we subtract 10 from six, that's gonna give us negative four. We can do this by completing the square. We can do it by factoring. We can do it by using the quadratic formula. We could do it by graphing it, you know, and finding out, you know, where it crosses this line. We could use our graphing calculator, a lot of different techniques. For this particular part, let's try doing it by factoring and also show you by completing the square. So let's start factoring first. It looks like we can factor out a negative four out of all of these terms. So let's do that. So that's gonna give us four t squared minus five t uh, plus one. Now we can factor this further. Uh, looks like it's gonna factor to four t times one t. That's gonna give us four t squared and negative one times negative one is positive one, and you can see the inside negative one t and outside negative four t add up to that middle term, negative five t. Now, because we have it factored, we can set each factor, each group equal to zero and solve. So we're gonna take four t minus one equals zero, and we're gonna say t minus one equals zero. Here, if we add one to both sides, you can see time equals one. So that would be like right here, see one second. And then over here when we solve, let's add one to both sides. We get four t equals one, divide both sides by four. You can see that t equals one fourth of a second. That would be right here. So there we go, there's our two points at where the uh, ball's 10 feet in the air. Now the other way to do this, if you don't want to factor it, some students are not as you know, uh, great at factoring, you could do the completing the square. So let me show you that method as well. So here at this point, 
uh, let's see, right here, let's go ahead and add the four to the other side. Okay, so if we do that, we're gonna get four equals negative 16t squared plus 20t. Now, when you complete the square, you want this leading coefficient to be one, right? So I'm gonna divide everything by negative 16. So that gives us negative 1 fourth. These cancel, that gives us t squared. And then this, if we reduce, four goes in here five times and four goes into here negative four times. I'll just make this minus 5 fourths t. Okay, so to complete the square now, we have to take half of this b value and square it. Now, if we add it to the right side, we also wanna add it to the left side to keep it balanced. Half of 5 fourths is 5 eighths. 5 eighths squared is 25 60 fourths. If I add 25 60 fourths here, I have to add 25 60 fourths over here. We need to get common denominators, so I'm gonna multiply the numerator and denominator by 16. So that's negative 16 60 fourths plus 25 60 fourths is 9 60 fourths. And then this part's a perfect square. We can factor it into t minus uh, 5 eighths, the quantity squared. All we have to do now is solve by taking the square root of both sides. That's gonna give us plus or minus 3 eighths. Square root of nine is three, square root of 64 is eight. Here the square and square root cancel, so we just have t minus 5 eighths. And then if I add 5 eighths to both sides of the equation, you can see we have 5 eighths plus 3 eighths, which is 8 eighths, or 5 eighths minus 3 eighths is 2 eighths, which is 1 fourth. Of course, 8 eighths is one, so we're getting one or one fourth, which is the same thing we got when we factored it. So a couple different options for solving these. We could also have done the quadratic formula as well. Let's go to part C. After how many seconds did the ball hit the ground? So now, going back to our diagram here, you can see the ball goes up, comes back down. We wanna know this point right here where it's hitting the ground. And let me ask you a question. What's the height of the ball once it hits the ground? Well, the height's gonna be zero, right? So it's zero feet above the ground. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put zero in for the height and we're gonna solve for the time. So let's go ahead and do that. We've got zero equals negative 16t squared plus 20t plus six. So we can do this a couple different ways. We can, again, factor, quadratic formula, et cetera. For this problem, let's do uh, factoring and then the quadratic formula, just for some variety. It looks like we can factor out a negative two so that's going to be 8t squared minus 10t uh, minus 3. And then we can factor this a little bit further. It looks like 4t times 2t will give us the 8t squared. And negative 3 and positive 1, that's going to give us 2t and negative 12t, which adds up to the middle term, negative 10t. So all we have to do now is set each of these factors, each of these groups equal to 0, and solve. So we have 4t plus 1 equals 0, and we have... 2t minus 3 equals 0. So if we subtract 1, divide by 4, t equals negative 1 fourth. And if we add 3 to both sides and divide by 2, you can see that t equals 3 over 2, which is equal to 1 and a half, or you could say 1.5 seconds. Now, what about this negative 1 fourth? Well, you see this parabola here? See, really, this parabola, it keeps going, right? It keeps going like this. Of course, when it goes here, it's gonna hit the ground and stop. It's not gonna go through the ground, okay, hopefully, right? Um, so that's really crossing right here at 1.5 seconds. But over here, see how this came out to negative one-fourth of a second? Well, we really can't go backwards in time. You know, we let go of the ball right here, it's going forward, it's not gonna go like backwards in time, negative time, it's not gonna go this direction. So this is what we call an extraneous root or like a false answer, we can cross that one out. It's just gonna be the one and a half seconds. Now, let me show you how to do this also using the quadratic formula. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to link to a video showing you how to solve all these different quadratic um, problems using five different methods. So let's go ahead and do the quadratic formula first. Okay, so you're familiar with the famous quadratic formula, this x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, all divided by 2a. It's a way of solving quadratic equations when they're in this form uh, where it's equal to zero. So it's like ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, and you can solve for that x solution. Those are the x-intercepts, the zeros, the roots, 
the solutions, etc. So in this case, you can see that A is negative 16, B is 20, and C equals 6. So we're going to put that into this formula here and solve. So we've got X equals negative B, which is like the opposite of B. That's going to be negative 20, plus or minus B squared. That's 20 squared, which is 400, minus 4 times A times C, which is 6, all divided by 2 times A, which is negative 16. Okay, so let's simplify this down a little bit here. We have, uh, let's see, this comes out to, uh, let's see, so this is uh, negative 16 times 6 is negative 96. Negative 96 times negative 4 is how much? Let's use a calculator on this one. This is 384, and then we have 400 plus 384, okay, and if we take the square root of that, well, let's do this part here first. So that's a 784, and then that's all divided by negative 32. Now, let's see. So here we have the square root of 784, which is 28, all divided by negative 32. And so it's like two problems in one. We have one where we're adding 28 and dividing by negative 32, and one where we're subtracting 28 and dividing by negative 32. So let's do the adding one first. Negative 20 plus 28 is 8, divided by negative 32, is negative one-fourth, which is what we got right here. And if we do negative 20 minus 28, that's negative 48 divided by negative 32, which is 1.5. So you can see we're getting the same answer just using the quadratic formula instead of factoring. If you're new to the channel, this channel is all about making learning math less stressful so you can raise your grade, pass your class, and go on to pursue your dreams. If that sounds like something that you're interested in, check out some of my other videos. I've got over 600 videos on the channel so far. And follow me over to that video right there where I dive into five different techniques for solving quadratic equations, some of which we uh, covered in this video. So I'll see you over in that video, and I'll talk to you soon.